Thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. And uh, I'd like to congratulate the Honourable Member for West Bromwich West uh, on this important bill and uh, to thank the Honourable Member for Cloyd South for presenting it and speaking on his behalf so eloquently. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, it's, it's frequently said that the UK has one of the toughest systems in the world for regulating the ownership of firearms. Members on both sides of the House will undoubtedly be thankful that this is the case, but will also share the belief that we must never lose sight of the need to ensure that our laws and regulations remain fit for purpose. The licensing system currently in force dates back more than 50 years, having been established by the landmark Firearms Act of 1968. But while this groundbreaking law was a vital first step, we must never allow ourselves to fall into the trap of complacency. Despite the importance of the 1968 Act, it took the unspeakable tragedies of mass shootings in Hungerford and Dunblane to prompt further action to tighten up our laws in the 1980s and 90s. And today, the memories of five people, Maxine Davison, Stephen Washington, Kate Shepherd, Lee Martin and Lee's three-year-old daughter Sophie, who were shot dead in Plymouth in August 2021, cast a long shadow over today's debate. We absolutely must not wait for another equally horrific event before taking the steps that are needed to bring the law up to date. I'd like to pay a particular tribute at this point to my honourable friend, the member for Plymouth, Sutton and Devonport, for his passionate advocacy of measures to further restrict the ownership of dangerous weapons and to counter online radicalisation, as well as the honourable member for West Bromwich West for sponsoring the bill we're here to discuss today. The intent of this bill is to make provision about the regulation of certain rifle ranges and shooting galleries, to make provision for an offence in relation to the possession of component parts of ammunition and for connected purposes. I will take each of these points in turn. Clause 1 of the bill would make limited changes to the scope of provisions in the Firearms Act 1968 on the use of weapons at shooting ranges and galleries. It is not clear that these changes go far enough. For instance, the Government's response to a consultation published last July announced plans to introduce a new requirement for operators of miniature rifle ranges to be issued with a firearm certificate. The response noted that this would require changes to primary legislation, but did not give a timescale. Perhaps the Minister could give the House an update on that point. Clause 2 of the Bill would introduce a new offence of possessing component parts of ammunition with intent to manufacture. This is an important step and reflects the widespread recognition that the law as it stands has not kept pace with changes in technology over recent years. But again, these changes do not appear to have gone as far as they could. For instance, the offence created by Clause 2 would apply to ownership of four primary components – bullets, cartridges, cartridge cases, primers and propellants. But perhaps the Minister could tell us whether he's confident that, even with these changes, the law would adequately reflect the application of recent technological developments, such as 3D printing, for example, and other evolving technologies which make access to deadlier weapons significantly easier for those who seek them. Beyond that, it's important to note that the new offence envisaged by Clause 2 would require evidence of an intent to use components to manufacture ammunition. What can the Minister or any Honourable Member who supports these changes tell us about what standard of proof will apply in seeking to determine intent and how attempts to evade detection might be addressed as part of efforts to tackle such offences? Finally, we should give some consideration to the many important issues which this bill does not address. First, can the government tell us whether it plans to establish a new independent regulator for firearms licensing? Can we also get an update on progress towards implementing the government's commitment to a national accredited training scheme for firearms inquiry officers? When will the new curriculum be introduced? What changes, if any, does the government plan to make to the licensing process at a national level? Will changes be made to the application fees for firearm certificates, which are currently between £70 and £80, pounds, in order to more accurately reflect the actual cost 
of processing these applications, which can exceed £500. What steps will be taken to address the apparent surge in the number of temporary permits, which, according to recent reports, is a direct consequence of backlogs in the system, in order to fully ensure that weapons do not get into the wrong hands? Finally, how will wider policy challenges, such as the urgent need for more effective action to tackle online radicalisation, be addressed in the weeks ahead? Would the Minister consider changes to the Online Safety Bill in order to strengthen the law in this area? In the past, it has all too often been the case that loopholes and weaknesses in our firearms laws were not addressed until it was too late. If there's one thing members of all political persuasions can agree on, it is that gun violence must be eradicated. I look forward to hearing more detail on the Government's plans to achieve this objective. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker.